So first of all, I should address a few things from the last entry before I get into recent events. The first part of this story took place in November of 2015. I was 14 years old at the time, and so was my friend Sam. We were a couple of stupid kids. Well, actually, it was mostly me with my stupid ideas, wanting to be the host of a ghost hunting show. Sam's mistake was agreeing to be my cameraman. This does not excuse any of my actions, of course. Sam is probably dead now. And it's my fault. I brought him there, and I left him alone when he didn't do what I wanted. And now he's gone. And there's not a single day I don't think about him. Despite my selfish actions, which I've written here for many to see, I did care about him. He was my best friend. But despite all of the unforgettable events of that day, I did try to not think about it. I really tried to burn those memories from my conscience. To live life with a clean slate. I had been doing all right, going to college, working, getting my own apartment. That was until last week when I checked my mailbox. I grabbed the note and looked over it carefully, my eyes scanning back and forth to make sure I was seeing things clearly. It was not quite the same handwriting as the note I had found in the mansion. However, it immediately reminded me of it. I thought back to that day, to that note, to that man standing in the woodline outside of the Thomas mansion. He had been impossibly tall. I had failed to get a good look. My blood ran cold as the memories of that day flooded back into my consciousness. I had wanted a, a ghost story and got more than I bargained for. Bringing myself back in the present, I, I looked at the note in my hand. There had been no envelope, no address. Just a note with four words scribbled on it. Whoever the sender of this message was, they delivered it themselves. This was worrying, to say the least. But I wasn't really sure there was anything I could do about it. But it had brought back the bad memories. And I decided to get them out there. That is when I wrote part one of this story. Afterwards, I began to research. I figured I would start by looking into the Thomas family. Noah Thomas had married Samantha, and they had three children named Ryan, Emily, and their youngest, Abe. Their family seemed to be a typical middle-class family, Mr. Thomas working for a large company, holding a secure and valuable position in it. Things started to get strange when in 2013, the youngest son, Abe, who had been nine at the time, drowned in the family pool. But it only gets weirder from there. Less than a year later, Noah Thomas was now the CEO of the company he worked at, which I will leave unnamed for obvious reasons. This essentially meant that he had a massive increase in income, 
and if I had to guess, a significant amount of political influence in the town. I'm not sure if I believe there's a correlation there or just circumstance, but rumors of greedy men sacrificing the innocent to obtain political power are not exactly uncommon. But if I had to guess, others certainly had their suspicions. One of those people who might have regarded Noah Thomas as a man worthy of judgment was Jack Henderson. Or at least that's my current theory. The thing is, there isn't much on record about Jack that I can find. There are some records of him working at the same company as Mr. Thomas. It seems this was discussed as a potential motive for the murder. And to be fair, it was the closest to a reasonable story. However, jealousy over position in your company usually does not lead to an immediate mental break followed by homicide. There has to be something more going on here. Jack Henderson was found not guilty by reason of insanity. He is currently still being treated in a mental institution that is not currently public knowledge. Jack Henderson entered a manic episode, broke into the Thomas mansion, and killed 17-year-old Ryan Thomas before entering the master bedroom and stabbing Noah and Samantha Thomas to death. He then sat in the mess he had created before calling the police to report his handiwork. Emily Thomas, who was 14 at the time, had been staying at a friend's house for the night. That's, that's about all the information I could find. And some of it is most certainly speculation. However, I wanted to properly fill you guys in on what I had found out. Since you have read my story. I have no idea how my experience relates and... I've almost convinced myself I was imagining things. I know that's not true, but it's easier to believe you are crazy. Ugh, man. My head hurts. I'm going to make sure I didn't forget any details. And post this. I was going to post this, but when I checked my mail today, I got another note. Same as last time, no envelope. All that was written on it was an address. I think it's near the community hiking trail. Not sure what I should do or if it's even related. If you guys have any ideas, Please, let me know. <sighs>